Hi everyone, let's talk about a Brazil philodendron. So you may be more familiar with the heart-shaped philodendron, which is just green foliage like this. These are some propagations that I took, jammed them all into one little container here. But you may be more familiar with this vine here, the heart-shaped philodendron. The only difference with the Brazil is um, it's just a different cultivar. It actually has this really stunning variegation on it. Love the way it looks. You care for these guys in similar ways, the heart-shaped philodendron in this. I would say um, moderate to bright and direct light for these guys is ideal. Philodendrons do tolerate lower light conditions if you don't have a ton of sunlight. Um, however, I would really recommend putting the Brazil philodendron in a lower light condition just because to maintain this variegation in the larger leaves, I would definitely keep it in a more moderate, bright, and direct light situation. As with all house plants, you want to make sure that the soil dries out pretty well with these philodendrons. They don't like sitting in any kind of moisture or anything like that, and they are a little more on the drought tolerant side. You'll definitely be able to see the foliage get a little shriveled up, um, and that will be the indication that you need to water these guys. So, just like with pothos or any other philodendron, I'm going to show you how to propagate this here. I am actually going to take probably a cutting off of both of these vines here. So I have my clean shears here and a cup of clean room temp water. I am just going to cut anywhere along this stem. The important part to note is if you don't have a longer vine that you want to use, just, making, uh, just make sure that you cut right underneath where one of the new leaves are coming out. That's called a node. And you're actually going to be able to see on the vine here, these little kind of brown roots that are shriveled up. Um, the, that's your node. And that's where your roots are going to start to come out of. So I just trimmed this vine off. And then I'm going to trim in segments in between where each new leaf comes out and then just rinse and repeat. So something important to note whenever you are propagating uh, really any plant, more likely than not, your newer foliage, um, usually the leaf that is coming out to even the leaf that was just most recently pushed out, if not even the one before that, probably will not make the propagation. The reason for that is because these guys just aren't very established. So I'm actually just going to compost this end of the vine. We will just call it quits on that guy. And I will go ahead and cut off a part of this vine as well. And I will see you guys in just a minute. Okay, everyone. So I have my propagations all trimmed up. I have a little bit of part of the vine left with primarily just the node is what I want to keep. Having a little bit of the stem of the vine is going to help you um, kind of wedge these in the soil a little bit better. You have a few options whenever you want to propagate. Really, the only difference is going to be what medium you use to propagate. You can choose to just stick these directly down into soil, or you can choose to stick these cuttings into some water and watch the root growth. I prefer water propagation just because it's kind of satisfying to see the root growth and see it progress. However, you can definitely just put these guys in some soil as well. Something important to note, um, whenever you are putting these in soil, regardless of whether or not you are water propagating and then moving into soil, or if you are just sticking them directly into soil, keep the soil on the moisture side. This will help the roots establish and kind of acclimate your cuttings a little bit better. So in order to water propagate, I'm actually just going to stick these right into a clean glass of water. Philodendrons um, don't take very long to water propagate. Something like a pothos is actually going to take quite a bit longer to propagate in water. Just what I have found over um, propagating my own plants. You can also use rooting hormone on these guys. You can find that at your big box stores or even online on Amazon or something like that. Um, and that will help speed up the rooting process. And it will also kind of help guarantee that your propagations are rooting properly. Um, it just stimulates that root growth. Not always necessary though. 
So I'm going to put quite a decent amount of propagations into one glass. Um, however, it's important to note that as your roots get a little bit longer, they're probably going to start to get a little entangled in there, so you might want to keep an eye on that. It will be a little bit of work to untangle all that. So I'm going to leave these guys in a bright indirect lighting situation. I don't want to expose it to really any direct sunlight or else that's going to promote algae and mold growth. Whenever I start to see some roots on these guys, I'm going to know that I'm doing things right and wait until those roots are around two inches long to transfer into soil. And then, like I said, keep that soil on the moisture side for about a week or so to kind of acclimate your cuttings from this very moist environment to a more dry environment in your soil. And then you guys should be pretty happy with what you see. So I have like 20 leaf propagations off of just a regular heart-shaped philodendron. And you can see all these newer leaves on top um, is just all new growth. So very prolific and easy to propagate. These were uh, water rooted and then I just stuck a bunch into this soil and I kept the soil a little moister for a few weeks and now I'm backing off to make sure I don't get any root rot or anything like that and you can see this guy is super robust, super full and as this gets longer I'm just going to trim and maintain the vining. You want to also make sure whenever you have these um, water propagations that you're changing the water um, a few times a week, I would say. Two to three times a week, if not a little bit more, would be ideal. Um, you're going to start to see if you're not changing that water frequently enough, or if you are exposing it to too much sunlight, that it's going to get a little slimy, it's going to get some mold, um, which you don't want. But if it happens, if it gets a little slimy, not a huge deal. Just make sure you rinse them off well, and they'll be good as new. If you want to speed up your propagation process, I recommend getting like a heat mat or keeping these guys in a warmer environment. I wouldn't expose them to any kind of like direct heat because that might damage the foliage, um, you know, and reduce the humidity. But I've heard of plenty of people using heat mats to heat up this water a little bit. Nothing crazy. Um, and that will help stimulate the root growth more, which is part of the reason why, you know, plants grow better in warmer seasons, things like that. If you're propagating, I would make sure you're doing it in the growing season. You can definitely do it throughout the winter and the non-growing seasons, but it's not optimal, it's going to take a longer time, and it's going to be more stressful on the plant as well. So, once these guys are propagated, I'll probably end up just sticking them back into this pot to kind of fill out this baldness at the top here. However, just from trimming those, those longer vines, I'm actually stimulating more growth up here at the top, so it might just naturally fill out as time progresses, but we will see how this guy does. And yeah, guys, let me know if you have any questions on propagation. Super easy stuff. The Brazil philodendron is a great plant. Um, very stunning, very easy to care for, and I highly recommend it. Thanks, everyone. Bye.